vegan. That means I don't eat any cooked food. I keep it real, I keep it raw. Fresh raw living food is where it's at for me. But uh, there's tons of people out there who are eating cooked food and I fully support them. Because they're happy, they're healthy, they're humble, and uh, they're standing up for a good cause, man. Veganism is a really good cause. Does everybody in the world need to go raw vegan? No way! Do I think everybody in the world should go raw vegan? If they want to. Do I think everybody in the world can go raw vegan? Yes! Yes, I do believe everyone can do what they want. And in fact, people always do what they set their mind to. But the, the, the real truth is not many people are setting their mind to being raw vegan. When you do set your mind to something and you keep it set, you will achieve it. But the only way you're ever going to keep your mind set on something is if you're obsessed with it, is if you're in love with it, is if you're fascinated with it, is if you're really excited about it. So, you've got to keep your mind set on something if you want to achieve it. It's, it's one thing to, to set goals, it's one thing to set your mind to something, but it's another thing to keep it set. You gotta reset those goals, you gotta rewrite those goals, you've gotta refocus and refocus every single day, you've gotta recalibrate every single day. GPS is always recalibrating whenever it's going somewhere. It's always recalibrating. When you get on a flight from San Francisco and fly to New York, that plane is off track 99% of the time. It's just constantly recalibrating, recalibrating, recalibrating. Off track, off track, off track, off track. But it's just getting bounced back on track by the GPS because the GPS is recalibrating. So it's not enough to just set, it's not enough for the GPS to just set the target. The GPS is constantly got to reset the target. It's got to recalibrate. Is it on track? Is it off track? Is it on track? Is it off track? If it's on track, keep going until it's off track. So that's the same with being raw vegan, that's the same with anything really. But when it comes to succeeding on raw vegan, you've got to just constantly, it's, it's trial and error. It's trial and error, especially the first few years. Try out some cooked foods, see if they work for you. I'm all about experimenting. Try out some cooked foods, see if they work for you. Try out some nuts and seeds, see if those work for you. Try out some unripe fruit, see if that works for you. Try out some low quality fruit, see if that works for you. Try out some pasteurized juice, see if that works for you. Try out some fasting, see if that works for you. Why wouldn't you see if it works? Why would you just take someone else's opinion or someone else's like dogma and just say like, well, I'm not going to try it because they said it was that book said, dude, you've got to listen to your body. Your body's going to know what's up. If I took just books advice and other people's advice, I wouldn't be here making YouTube. I wouldn't have a YouTube channel. I wouldn't have a unique YouTube channel. I wouldn't have my own voice. But from trial and error, from seeing what works for me, I am my own expert. I'm an expert in my own life. I'm an expert on Ted Carr's life. And you're probably an expert on your life. You are an expert on your life, man. No one knows you better than you know yourself. No one knows what works for you better than what, than you know. You know, I, I can tell you that you're a human being, therefore you're designed to eat fruit. I can tell you that, yeah, you can definitely succeed in raw vegan if you set your mind to it. You will succeed in raw vegan if you set your mind to it. But how that unfolds and and if, if, you, if you are enjoying the process or not is totally up to you. That's your story. That's your story. I think the most beautiful story in the world, the, the best story ever written, is the one that we write ourselves. It's the story that I write for me. It's the story that you write for you. It's the story that we tell ourselves. At the end of the life, we look back on our story, man, it's going to be the most beautiful story ever. Imagine being on your deathbed and then telling your grandchildren or your family around you your life story. That is going to be such a beautiful story. If you write it to be a beautiful story, you can plan these things out in advance. But uh, you're probably not gonna you're probably not gonna be able to stick to the plan. But it's not what planning is for. Plan, writing a plan is not so that you stick to the plan. It's so that you've thought about it in advance. The best companies in the world, Apple, Panasonic, Sony, they all have like 30-year plans. Do they ever stick to those plans? No way. But at least they planned it out. At least they planned it out. It means they got they got thinking about it. Mike Tyson said like, dude, like you've you've got to go into the ring with with a plan. But once you get punched in the face. You've got to be flexible enough to scrap the plan and just stay alive in there and keep fighting. So planning is not so that you stick to the plan. So if you ever set goals and you, you fall off track and you don't reach your goals, that's okay. Goals are not to be reached. Goals are to cause you to stretch, to, to cause you to think bigger, and to get you moving in a certain direction. What comes from that is, uh, what comes after that is, is totally uh, a mystery. We don't know what's happening tomorrow. But at least you're in the right direction. At least you're getting moving by setting the goals. At least you're getting moving by thinking big. At least you're getting moving by putting your pen to paper and saying, this is what I want. This is what I'm going to go for. So the amount of times I wrote down, I want to be raw vegan. I want to eat 100% raw vegan, living barefoot in Hawaii, wearing short shorts and no shirt. I'm only wearing a shirt now because I'm just about to head out. But 
it was a total pipe dream. I was probably high when I wrote it, to be honest. I probably smoked a big bowl and wrote down what was ideal for me. I want to be barefoot, shirtless, being fruitarian in Hawaii. Total pipe dream. And I want to make all my money online. And I want to be inspiring thousands of people. And I want to be part of a community. I want to have a bunch of like-minded friends. I want to be living with like-minded friends. How oh, is it possible that I'm now doing it now? I don't know how it's possible, but it is. It is possible because you do whatever you set your mind to. It's not a matter of you can do whatever you set your mind to. We've heard that a million times. It's that you do whatever you set your mind to. The problem is you may not be keeping your mind set on a set thing long enough for it to be fulfilled. You may not have found that thing that really excites you because instead you're focusing on all the things that scare you. But guess what? If you know what you don't like in life, instead of giving it all your attention, saying, I don't want that, I don't want that, I don't want that, instead of doing that, you know what you do? You say, I, know, I don't want that, therefore, I probably want that. In fact, yeah, I do want that. In fact, yes, I definitely do want that. That's what's most exciting. Look at that, man. Look how exciting that is. Yes, I love playing Mario Kart. That's what I want, man. Playing Mario Kart with my friends, how fun is that? So I love playing Mario Kart. Instead, of, I'm going to give this all my energy, all my focus. That's really, really fun to me. Just chilling out playing Mario Kart with friends. Just kicking it, you know? Instead of focusing on that lighter over there, there's a lighter over there. Instead of thinking like, oh my god, don't want to smoke weed, don't want to smoke weed, don't want to smoke weed. Probably can't see a lighter over there, but maybe if I zoom in. So instead of focusing on that and saying, oh my god, I don't want that. I say, I just want this. Give me all, give me the focus here. Put my focus there. So where your focus goes, that's where energy flows. Energy is always flowing to wherever your attention is going. So a lot of my attention goes to YouTube. A lot of my attention goes to Snapchat. A lot of my attention goes to things like Instagram, social media, just getting the raw vegan message out there. A lot of my attention goes to, to being healthy, and to being fit. A lot of my attention goes to, uh, to creating epic businesses, to, to working on my app. That's where my attention is going all day. I don't put my attention on the most shit that most people put their attention on. I don't put my attention on Hillary and Trump. I don't put my attention on ISIS and Iraq and all that stuff. That's for the people who want to focus on that, for people who, who are passionate about that, for, for, for the content that lights people up, they can focus on that content. But what lights me up is focusing on really positive stuff. I only want to consume positive content. That's where I put my focus. And thoughts become things. You become what you think about. Your life begins to reflect. Your life physically, 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 you can begin to hold things in your hand when you've held them in your mind long enough. When you can close your eyes and visualize your perfect life and it makes you feel really, really good, then you know you're on track. And you've got to keep holding that feeling. So when I say focus on something, I don't necessarily mean like look at a picture of something. I mean, I mean, hold that feeling. Hold that feeling of having achieved what you want to achieve. Every time you think a thought, there's a feeling attached to it. And again, whether you're, whether, you're, whether you're aware of that or not is a different story. You don't need to be aware that you're in a bad mood to be in a mad mood. You don't need to be aware that you're in a good mood to be in a good mood. But I want you to bring your awareness on your feeling the next time you focus on something. So when you're watching my videos, how do you feel? In fact, please let me know how you feel when you, when you watch my videos. Post in the comments down below. I'd love to know the feeling you get. Are you fascinated? Are you intrigued? Are you upset when you watch my videos? Are you really motivated when you watch my videos? Are you curious? Are you a bit let down? Are you a bit just totally inspired? Are you fascinated? How, how are you feeling when you watch my videos? Because that's what you need to start familiarizing yourself with. Conor McGregor was just asked, Conor, how does it feel to, to be the, to be the two-time or two-weight class champion of the UFC? And he's like, I'm not surprised. This is a very familiar feeling. I've had this feeling with me for a long time. I've been visualizing this for years. It feels familiar. I saw it so clearly. I swear to God, I saw it so clearly, so consistently, until it just until it's here in reality. So I've been saying this a long time. Um, I'm very, very uh, satisfied, very grateful, very happy, but not surprised. You know what I mean? I, I knew it. I knew it was going to happen for me. So for Connor, it was a very familiar feeling to already be a champion. He's already been visualizing for years. He's already been feeling it for years. Why? Not because someone told him, but because he was so obsessed with that. It's all he thought about. It's all he went to bed thinking about. So for me, that was with Raw Vegan. I wanted to be Raw Vegan so badly. There weren't many people being Raw Vegan when I got into it. There was Durian Rider, there was Freely, there was Ann Osborne, and there was a few other people on, online. Uh, and uh, I, I was just so inspired. I wanted to be one of them. I'd be like, yes, if they're doing Raw Vegan, I want to be doing Raw Vegan too. It works. Only Raw passed this job. You know, eating from the vine, feeling divine. It's just, it's just so, to me, raw vegan is just so superior to any other diet form. That's what I want. I'm just so attracted, so inspired by that. So that's what I thought about. 
And I just kept writing down my goals, writing down my goals, and making mind movies, and just visualizing this perfect life over and over and over again. And now it's here. So, is raw veganism for everyone? It's for anyone who wants it, for sure. It's for anyone who wants it, for sure. You can make it happen. If you want something, you find a way every time. If you don't want it, you find an excuse. So, that's it. Do you want just a quick question, bro? What do you think about the quote? If you want something, you find a way. If you don't, you find an excuse. Perfect. I love it. Cool, bro. <laughs> Anyways, guys, that's it. Thanks for watching. Video's out. Peace. Also a drink, I was still wet from the rain. Oh, okay. <laughs> <It> was hydration. <laughs>